everyone. In the previous class, we saw that how Ladani's method can be applied for the elastoplastic analysis of uh, the rock mass tunnel support interaction phenomenon. And uh, uh, we saw with the help of uh, the three examples that how we can approach to uh, such type of problems. So, today we will start uh, the next chapter dealing with the methods of tunnel excavation and various support systems. So, today we will uh, take up one of the support system which is the shotcrete. Now, for many classes you have been learn, uh, learning or you have been hearing about the terms like uh, uh, drilling and blasting, benching and heading and then short crete, rock bowls, etc. So, all those terms we will learn these things uh, in some of the uh, few classes now. So, as far as the methods of tunnel excavations are concerned, uh, the soils we use shield tunneling there the tunnel boring machine is there specially dedicated to soils. In case of the hard rocks or hard jointed rocks, we go ahead with the full phase drill and blast method or the tunnel boring machine. If you recall in some of the earlier classes, I mentioned to you the uh, I mentioned to you some details about the tunnel boring machine along with the, some of the pictorial views. Then uh, we have uh, for poor or weak jointed rock mass, uh, there are methods like benching and heading method and multiple drift method which are more suitable. We have a, a cut and cover method wherever you have very low or almost no overburden. Uh, of on the uh, excavation. So, let us take them one by one. So, first we focus on the drill and blast method. So, here is a picture which has been taken from this source. Uh, there you can see that the rigs are working uh, to make the holes in the rock mass. So, what all are the various steps in the drill and blast method. Let us try to take a look. So, first of all in drill and blast method number of holes are drilled into the rock. What should be the length, what should be the diameter all those things can be designed and when these things are designed so we call this as controlled blasting. Once you have these holes which are drilled into the rock, once these are filled with explosive, then the detonation of this explosive takes place. So, what happens because of that? The blast takes place inside the rock mass. So, that causes the rock to collapse. Once this is uh, collapsed, so what will happen? There is going to be the small fragments uh, because of this blasting phenomena and there will be the loose material. So, we need to remove that rubble and reinforcement of the new tunnel surface should also be done depending upon what is a stand up time. And then we keep repeating these uh, steps which are listed here and slowly the result is the creation of the tunnel. So, this is how the drill and blast method takes place. So, as the name suggests, first we drill some number of holes into the rock, then we charge them with the help of explosive, then the detonation of the explosive takes place. So, the rocks collapse and uh, then the removal of the rubble is done followed by the reinforcement of the new tunnel surface and these, these steps are uh, repeated to create the tunnel. So, the next method is uh, benching and heading method. In this again we have two categories, one is the single drift method and the second one is multiple drift method. 
Now let us say that there is an excavation which is shown like this as is here in this figure. This is the excavation which is to be made. So, in single drift method you see that you create a bench which is equal to the width of the excavation. So, we create a horizontal bench uh, up to the length of the excavation perpendicular to the plane of uh, screen. The advance uh, which is made or the heading that is uh, used in uh, one go is 1.5 to 2 meter. Then once this portion is removed that means the removal sequence is going to be 1 and then the second portion followed by the third one and the fourth one. So, once this portion is removed then we lower this bench maybe this second part and then the third one followed by the fourth one. So, here in this case you see why this is called as a single drift method means here we have only one bench which is made throughout the length of the excavation. But in case if we have a very poor rock mass then this type of the method may not work. In that case then we have to go for the multiple drift method. So, before I discuss with you multiple drift method first let us try to take a look at some of the significant feature of this single drift method. So, here we employ the controlled blasting in such a way that heading and advance in the first stage is approximately 1.5 to 2 meters. This will help us in creation of a horizontal bench across the entire width of the cavern. So, uh, the bench is there across the entire width of the cavern. This bench is then subsequently lowered in stages to create an excavation of length which is equal to the length of the heading. This means the dimension perpendicular to the plane of the screen. So, this complete procedure is repeated till we excavate the full size of the cavern. Now, what we do is the moment we excavate we keep on providing the support system simultaneously. So, there should be the simultaneous provision of the support systems after the heading and then the subsequent benching. The question is if the rock mass quality is poor then what will happen? Then this single drift method will not work. So, can we again use benching and heading method for uh, the uh, excavation? The answer is yes, but then we need to go for the multiple drift method. Now, you see that here numbers are written some here throughout the excavation. So, you see 1, 1, then we have 2, 3 on both sides, 4, 5 on both the sides again, 6, 7 and 8. So, you can have uh, the different sequence of this excavation. Like in this case, one can go for the excavation in the following sequence. Like first you remove the areas 1, then 3, then 5, 7 and then you go ahead with 2, 4, 6 and 8. So, what will happen if we remove 1, 3, 5 and 7? So, what will happen? This will be removed along with this one. So, only a column here which is comprising of this particular area this will be left and then once these two side uh, excavation has been made we can immediately support the side wall and then maybe we can start uh, the excavation from the roof again. So, this is how the multiple drift method works. So, you see that here the benching is done not across the complete width of the excavation, but in 
parts. So when you do it in part and install the support system simultaneously, what happens is the part which has been excavated, now it is supported and then you can carry on the remaining portion for the excavation. Now in this case, it is not necessary that you follow this order of uh, the excavation or this sequence of excavation as I just now explained. Somebody can go for maybe removal of one, then followed by two, then provide the support in the roof portion and then maybe you know keep on excavating the third portion and then the fourth and keep on providing the support. So, whatever that we excavate to the best extent possible, we keep providing the support system simultaneously. So, in case if we go for this sequence as it has been mentioned here, first what we will do, we excavate it and then we provide the support system to the side walls and then once you remove this second portion, then you provide the complete installation of the support system in the roof. After the removal of this 7 portion, maybe you can provide the uh, invert here and once you remove this 8th portion, then you will be having the complete excavation ready. So, this is what is called as multiple drift method. Coming to various support systems, so we have discussed this that we may have uh, the short creek lining, rock bolts or steel sets or we can go for the grouting through rocks. So as far as this course is concerned, we will be focusing on these three which is the short creek lining, rock bolts and grouting through rocks. So today and in the next class, we will take up the first type of the support system which is the short creek lining. We will learn about various aspects related to the shortcrete lining. So, what exactly is shortcrete, how it is prepared, what exactly is the procedure? So, there are uh, two types of uh, typical shortcrete operation, one is the dry mix, another one is wet mix. We will see that what exactly is the difference between the two. But uh, how this is prepared, this figure is self-explanatory. You see here that the dry cement, sand and accelerator mix is fed from this place to uh, this agitator here that goes through the screen. It goes to the agitator, there is the compartment where through this we pass the air through this compartment and then we supply the compressed air here and see it goes to the end here. There note that we have a water line and then there is a control wall through which you can control the amount of water which is to be fed to this dry mix of the cement, sand and the accelerator and we have the nozzle tip through which the shortcrete comes out under the pressure and you see that this is the surface of the rock mass and how the shortcrete layer is placed here on the rock mass surface. This is about the dry mix shortcrete operation. Let us take a look at the typical wet mix shortcrete operation. So, in this case the difference is that earlier we were mixing the ingredients in the dry form and just before the spraying of shortcrete we were mixing it with water. But in this case, it is little bit different. Here we have the wet mix ready. So that means that the water is added while preparing the mix. And then simply it is transported and then this is uh, the air pipe and uh, this is the rubber nozzle tip through which under pressure this shortcrete is sprayed 
on the rock mass surface in this particular manner. Let us understand what is the difference between wet mix and the dry mix. As far as wet mix is concerned, there is going to be the lower rebound when spraying. Now, what do we understand by this rebound? So, let us say if this is the rock mass surface. With the help of the nozzle, you are spraying the short crete. Now, what will happen depending upon the surface and the material here, the short crete material will go, it will stick to this particular surface and then some portion will be rebound from this surface. So, that is what we call as the rebound. So, when we have the wet mix, there is the lower rebound when we are spraying it. Since we are mixing it with the water earlier when we are preparing the mix, so we have full control of the water cement ratio. The quality control in the preparation of the material is easier in this case because uh, the manufacturing of the material is very near or identical to concrete. Quality of in place shortcrete is not really very sensitive uh, to the performance of the nozzle man since uh, he does not have to add the water flow. While in case of the dry mix what happens is that this quality it depends upon the uh, nozzle man's uh, performance because he has to control that how much of the water should be mix mixed before it is sprayed on the rock mass surface. The nozzle man directly controls the impact velocity of the particles and thus compaction by regulating the air flow at the nozzle is there. The wet mix is easier to clean, it has lower maintenance cost and higher production rates. However, coming to the dry mix situation, it is more adaptable to varying ground conditions, particularly where there is a presence of uh, water. The dry mix equipment is typically less expensive and a larger inventory of used equipment is uh, available. Uh, the dry mix machines are uh, typically smaller and therefore more adaptable to tunnels where uh, the limited uh, working space is uh, available. But then they uh, both of these they have their positive as well as negative points. So, here we have to take a call that based upon the situation that we have in the field one should adopt whether it is to be wet mix or dry mix. Now, this is a typical picture where you can see a nozzle man spraying the shortcrete on the rock surface and you see that a steel mesh is also laid. Now, what is the purpose of this steel mesh? Let us take a look. But before that, say this is the mesh and then the this is the nozzle. So, the nozzle man has to make this kind of an operation or to have this elliptical motion so that the loops are elliptical which are 500 millimeter long, 200 millimeter high and advance between the two loops is 100 millimeter. Advance means this distance, uh, the distance from one loop to the other loop. Although these days uh, machines are also available, but uh, sometimes uh, this uh, uh, manual operation of the short crete is also done. Uh, as I was mentioning that usually a mesh is first attached to the rock surface before the laying of the short crete or spraying of the short crete. So, this weld mesh is usually attached to the rock by placing a second washer and nut 
on uh, each existing rock bolt. So, let us say if you have to go for the combination of rock bolt and the uh, short creed. So, this is how it looks like this is how. So, here uh, you see that with the help of a second washer and nut how the steel mesh is held at place um, to already existing rock bolt. Then you can have uh, short pins or bolts uh, also used for the intermediate mesh fixing. So, here this is what is uh, the chain link fencing uh, that is uh, being shown uh, that is attached with the excavated surface. So, this is how it looks like that is the zoomed version of that. So, this is uh, the chain link mesh which is used to prevent falls of uh, small pieces of broken rock from the roof of uh, uh, mine haulage. So, what happens is immediately upon the excavation you lay such type of chain link mesh. So, whatever is the broken rock mass pieces, it will not fall down inside the excavation, this mesh will hold it and then once this mesh is fixed uh, all along the excavation and then you can spray the short grid. Coming to the selection of uh, material for the preparation of uh, short creed. So, you need to have the uh, Portland cement. So, there are four types of the Portland cement they can be used. Uh, the type 1 is uh, widely used because it is readily available. But then in case if there are such requirement that you need some special type of the Portland cement, then you may choose the other type such as uh, type 2 which has the moderate sulphate resistance. We have the other one which is type 3 because of its composition and the fineness this provides high earlier strength. Uh, this provides high early strength. So, in case if our requirement is that uh, the stand up time is low, then maybe one can go for the type 3 type of uh, the Portland semen. Coming to the next one, if the situation is such that that you need high sulphate resistant Portland semen, then maybe you can go for type 5 uh, Portland semen. Uh, for the preparation of short creed. Then we have a few special regulated set cement. So, these uh, contain calcium fluoro aluminate. This gives very high rate of strength gain for the first few hours without uh, any use of the accelerator. Uh, the common use is the type 1 cement along with the accelerators. Then flexibility can be achieved by small variation in mix design. How this is done that also we will learn. Uh, essential to check the compatibility of uh, cements and accelerator as we need both the early strength and the ultimate strength. So, therefore, compatibility of the cement and accelerator should be there because the early strength as well as the ultimate strength both are influenced by mixing the components uh, which are not compatible. So, we have to be careful about the compatibility of cements and the accelerators. Then coming to the next component of short creep as far as selection of material is concerned, this is aggregate. Uh, it should be clean, hard, tough, strong and durable. These one should keep in mind. These should be free from silt, soft and coated grains, mica, harmful alkali and organic matter. Then alkali reactive aggregates should always be avoided and the maximum aggregate size that one should use should be 19 millimeter or less than that. What is the importance of aggregate gradation? 
So, this is uh, critical in the mixed design pumpability, mixed design of uh, the short creek, then pumpability, then flow through the hose pipes, hydration at nozzle. When we spray on the rock surface, what is the adherence of it to the rock mass area? Then uh, this is also very critical in the design of the support system and ultimately the economy of the final product. So, since it is extremely critical in all these uh, factors, one should be careful about the choice of aggregate gradation. What are the advantages of increase in the percentage of coarse aggregates? When you increase it, it results into better compaction. It results into the enhanced density and low water and cement requirement. It results into less shrinkage and the higher bond and the flexural strength. But then there are also some of the disadvantages which are associated with an increase in the percentage of the coarse aggregate. Since the short crete uh, is more difficult to pump and uh, it gives more rebound during the shooting, if it has uh, uh, the in uh, more percentage of the coarse aggregate. So, what we need to do is uh, we need to design the proper percentage of the coarse aggregate which is to be mixed while selecting the uh, material for the short creed because if too much of the coarse aggregate is there then it becomes uh, uh, difficult to pump and also it will give more rebound. So, we will have more loss of the material during spraying or shooting of the uh, short creed layer. Coming to the next uh, material which is water. So, it should be clean and it should be free from oil, grease, salts, alkali and the organic matter. The potable water can be used uh, while preparing the short crete. The, then the next uh, material which is to be added is the accelerators. There is uh, the rapid gain in the strength. Uh, to provide the immediate support to rock. So, uh, we have the cement, sand and the coarse aggregate along with the water plus we add uh, the accelerator. The reason being that uh, if one needs to have the rapid gain in the strength uh, to have the immediate support to the excavated surface, then one should go for the addition of the uh, accelerators. Then uh, addition of the accelerators also improve the short creek shooting conditions. These reduce rebound particularly while working overhead. Overhead means is the uh, roof portion or if a, pers uh, if a person is uh, there, so whatever is there um, above his or her height. So, as far as the side walls are concerned, if it is the lower portion of the side wall, uh, then uh, of course, the rebound will not be that much even in the general condition. But uh, when working overhead, uh, this addition of the accelerator reduces the rebound. What types of the accelerators that are available? So, the first type is uh, CACL2. It is uh, not sufficient fast acting for most of the underground applications. So, the 5 percent of CACL2, uh, it provided the rapid set, but uh, at the cost of reduction in ultimate strength and durability. So, here uh, you know that we have to take a call that what is more important for us whether we, we uh, need the rapid setting or we can have a compromise towards the reduction in the ultimate strength and durability which may not be acceptable in most of the projects and therefore, the use of CACL2 is not recommended that often. 
there are various uh, special accelerators which are marketed for use in uh, short crete these generally contain water soluble salts as active ingredients like sodium carbonate sodium aluminate and calcium hydroxide their proportions may vary from one brand to the other and these are also available in liquid as well as the powder form these should be used in overhead works and on the side walls and need not to be used for invert so if you recall that if we have uh, this type of let us say the excavation so this is basically the roof portion these are the side walls and this is the invert portion so what uh, the guidelines say that uh, these uh, uh, special accelerators it should be used in overhead works that is maybe roof or the side walls and also on the side walls uh, but then need not to be used for inverts uh coming to the mix proportion so typical short crete mix is uh, uh having cement coarse aggregate fine aggregate and the water cement ratio so this is uh, 15 to 20% coarse aggregate should be 30 to 40% fine aggregate should be 40 to 50% and uh, the water cement ratio should be between 0.3 to 0.5 in case of the Uh, dry mix short crete and in case of the wet mix short crete it should be 0.4 to 0.6 so this is uh, about the mix proportions in the next class we will learn about uh, some aspects related to add mixtures which should be added to the short crete to have its enhanced effect so thank you so much